All right, this video is related to describing stress states and particular types of stress states that may be commonly observed and how they relate to what actually happens to a material before we actually talk in any detail about strain. So we're going to try and describe some of these individual characteristics of a stress state. So we'll start out with the, the first example and I'll grab my tool and look at this case. So we have the case of this stress state. You notice we have some value here and we'll say, let's say sigma naught was equal to 20 megapascals. Okay, so that might be a quite reasonable stress. If it's equal to 20 megapascals and we have stress as defined, you could say that this was perhaps a stress being applied normal to these two areas since that would be very easy to do. We would have to, of course, define an axis system such that the x direction was something like this. Otherwise, we're going to have a, a challenge in terms of describing our, our, individual set of, uh, our individual set of axes. And if we take that as our set of axes, we could have perhaps x that way, perhaps z coming this way. And if that were the case, so z would be coming out of the, the front of this. In order for z to come out this way, Right? We'd have to have x such and y such that y points in this direction, right? So that we could cross x into y with the right hand rule and get z. So we could describe a tensile stress as something like that, 20 MPA, force applied normal to this particular area, right? And normal to this area down below. It gives us this force couple that gives us a set a set of stresses that produce tension, or what would be described as a tensile stress. We have a sign convention issue here in that if we were to describe sigma naught as being equal to minus 20 MPA, right, that would be a state of compression. or a compressive stress. And truly that would be defined with probably arrows that would be drawn a little bit differently. We might want to choose, in that case, to describe our arrows as pointing something like this. For this case, where this is minus 20 MPA, and that's where people can get confused by the sign convention. I would always say minus 20 MPA, I would reverse the direction of these arrows and say that's compression so that we can see the action as being given by the arrows. Clearly, if the arrows point this way, they're in the opposite direction to what the sign convention defines as positive. So to me, there is no conflict, but there are people who get confused. To have the arrows do your work, if it's minus 20 MPA, it is compression. Okay, so that's compression. The opposite case is tension. What happens if we have equal forces applied in three directions? What happens if we have sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, and sigma 3, 3, each is being equal? We have a particular challenge in that case. So we're saying that sigma 1, 1 is equal to sigma 2, 2 is equal to sigma 3, 3. That is often called a hydrostatic stress. Hydro, that's an R, hydrostatic. That's a pressure if it's negative, and it's tension in all directions if it's positive. Okay, and that's a hydrostatic stress state. And so the reason I use a P here is often if this is P, where P is less than zero, then we're talking about a compressive stress, which can be equivalent to a pressure. So we might draw that as something like this. If they're all equal and opposite, and it would also be the case coming into the back, if they're all equal and opposite, then we would be applying a pressure. If, they're, if this value is actually positive, which is a, a, in terms of a positive value, right? 
then we can define this uh, with the arrows pointing outward. For each of these cases, in a hydrostatic stress, we usually do not expect any case of where there's deformation unless there's holes or voids within the material. It is actually the stress state related to pressure. Turns out that the sum of these individual terms across this diagonal has a special meaning, which we'll talk about here in a moment.